This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Thank you for joining us. We are coming to you from the Moy International Sports Center, Kasarani, in Nairobi, Kenya. We bring to you Sports Scene, the special edition. The 2020 Olympic dream lives on. Indeed, as the world ushered in the year 2020, Tokyo was putting the final touches in preparation to host the biggest sporting carnival on the planet, the 2020 Olympics, early March and the Olympic flame was ignited in Olympia, Greece, setting the pace that would culminate to the lighting of the Olympic torch in Tokyo during the opening ceremony. However, the world was beginning to feel a different type of heat, that of a looming pandemic. COVID-19 spread to all corners of the globe during the fall season, forcing many countries into shutdown. The International Olympics Committee and Japan jointly announced the unprecedented postponement of the 2020 Summer Paralympic Games to 2021. Tokyo 2020 became the first ever Olympic canceled during the peacetime era and the fourth in modern history. The postponement of the Olympics caused a seismic shock worldwide. CGT in Africa takes you on a journey to uncover the impact the Olympics pushback has had on athletes across Africa and how they have adjusted to the upcoming 2021 games. Had everything gone to plan, the Japanese capital of Tokyo would now be the focus of the entire sporting world with the 23rd Olympic Games in full swing. However, the biggest international sporting carnival was pushed forward to 2021 due to the coronavirus crisis. CGTN's Mohamed Abubakar brings us more. Since the advent of the modern Olympic Games in 1896, the best athletes from all over the world have converged every four years to leave the Olympic stream. Recent editions of the Summer Games have gifted the world immortal sporting moments. At Atlanta 1996, Nigeria made history when they became the first African nation to win a football Olympic gold. Jamaica's Usain Bolt stunned the world when he broke the 100 and 200 meters sprint records at Beijing 2008. With uh, Solomon finishing, but Rudisha, what's the time? It's a world record! In London four years later, Kenya's David Rudisha became an instant legend when he became the first man to break a world record in 800 meters at the Olympics. 40.91 is shown on the clock. And South Africa's Wade Van Niekerk produced a performance of all ages when he set the men 400 meters world record in Rio 2016. The world, however, will have to wait a little bit longer to witness such iconic moments. In March, the International Olympics Committee and host Japan announced the Tokyo 2020 Olympics had been pushed to 2021. The World Health Organization uh, speaks of the acceleration of uh, the spreading of uh, the virus. Uh, so uh, we were addressing uh, this uh, situation and uh, came to uh, the conclusion uh, that in, in order to safeguard the health uh, of uh, the athletes and everybody involved uh, in uh, the Olympic Games that uh, we have uh, to postpone. This put a halt to final preparations of athletes from over 200 countries as the coronavirus pandemic claimed the biggest sporting carnival. Athletes and fans now hope the Tokyo 2020 Games will finally run from the 23rd of July to the 8th of August next year. 
Sporting cathedrals around the world, like this one, have fallen silent due to the coronavirus pandemic. But as we shift towards post-COVID-19 action, the best sporting talent around the globe continue to prepare for a shot at Olympics glory. Mohamed Abubakar for CGTN, Nairobi, Kenya. Since the late Robert Wangila won boxing gold at the Seoul 1988 Games, no other Kenyan athlete has scaled those heights except in athletics to bring the country Olympic glory. At the ripe age of 38, Nico Koth still aspires to mint gold at Tokyo 2020, having secured a return to the Olympics 12 years after his debut at the Beijing 2008 Games. CGTN's Dorothy Chow documents his journey. A journey to book a ticket to the Tokyo Olympics starts with hard work, determination, and pushing yourself an extra mile each day. For Nico Koth, the journey entails pushing yourself extra. This will be his second Olympics after going to the Beijing Olympics in 2008. That time, he was eliminated early, but this time, he was eyeing a better success story. However, while coming back from the qualifying games, the news of the coronavirus struck him. When we came back from Senegal, we got to the airport and people were being screened. Christine Ogare went first and we started laughing at her. We didn't know at the time what was going on. When I got home, after about two days, that's when I heard that the games in Europe had been cancelled due to COVID. At the time, I kept wondering what this COVID was. I came to understand it well a few weeks back and I thank God for letting me qualify. For a military man, however, he didn't suffer much as other boxers fully reliant on the sport. The defense forces have tasked the former African boxing champion with one job, to train in order to medal at the Olympics. There's one of my bosses at the military known as Carol Magori. She came to a boxing fight once and realized that boxing is not all about strength, it's a science. Anytime she sees me, she calls me a scientist. She has always been very supportive. She told me that due to this corona that I should go home and focus on my training, and that is what I've been doing ever since. I dream to match Robert Wangila's performance at the Olympic Games by winning a gold medal has been his biggest drive throughout Okot's career. I want Wangila to rest in peace. I always pray to God to help me get the gold because we have really mentioned his name. Whenever people die, we say rest in peace. I don't think Wangila has rested in peace and I think he is waiting for another person to take the boxing gold medal. Nick Okoth is a man on a mission not only to represent his country at the now postponed Olympics, but also to give a good showing for his brothers in the army who are always urging him on from wherever in the world they are in. Chao Mgono, CGTN. On today's special segment, Olympics in History, we take a look at the first African country to ever participate in the Olympics. First time they've been represented in the Olympic competition. Makes their appearance here dressed in their native costumes of the Cameroon. Did you know, before independence, Africans participated under the flags of their respective colonial powers? But in the 1960s, more African countries joined the Olympic Games. This is because many African states were attaining their independence. It only remains for me to present to you, Mr. Prime Minister, these constitutional instruments which establish Kenya's independence. Currently, African countries have been long-time members of the modern Olympic Games. So which was the first African country in the Olympics and in which year? South Africa was the first to participate in the Olympic Games in 1908 officially. But the country was banned from the Olympics in 1964 due to apartheid. For 30 years, the country did not participate in Olympics up until 1990 when negotiations to end apartheid commenced. Since then, South Africa has continued to send many sportsmen and women into the Olympics and in the postponed Tokyo 2020 Games, South Africa ranked the first in Africa with the majority of participants. The greatest journeys. The greatest sights the greatest adventures. Here in Panata, this year, 
allows the locals to walk on water. We're far more than just TV news. We're your passport to the wonders of Africa. To bring you stories of struggle, survival and hope. Ah. Ah. So let's explore. CGTN. See the difference. South Africa is aiming to send not one but two divers to the Tokyo 2020 Games in 2021 with ambitions of not just making up the numbers in the highly competitive three meter springboard event. One of the Olympics hopefuls is Michaela Bauter, who, despite the postponement, is determined to mix it up with the best divers in the world. CGTN CS Du Plessis has more from Johannesburg. Ever since Michaela Bauter was a little girl, the only thing on her mind was to be an Olympian. I remember when I was little, after watching the event, I would go into my backyard to my garden and I would uh, announce my name and my country and my dive and I would professionally march onto my trampoline and I would perform a movement on my trampoline and um, kind of simulate the crowd going wild. And um, I have now been to World Championships and I've now been to Commonwealth Games um, and the only one left from my garden simulations is the Olympics. The African champion had one last hurdle before realizing her dream the South African National Championships. But sadly, the event was postponed, and shortly afterwards, the news broke that the Olympic Games too had been postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, forcing her to take a break from training and rendering facilities normally bustling with athletes empty. It's, more, it's been more mentally, mentally frustrating because um, I would kind of been training for four years leading up to, to these Olympics, and. Um, I think we had a stretch of a couple of months, maybe five months left when this all happened. So um, mentally just very disappointing to have put in so much work and effort um, for a deadline and then that deadline to be moved. The University of Houston alumni lives and coaches in the United Kingdom and will continue to prepare for the sporting showpiece next year with her former college coach. But despite not being able to dive back into the water just yet, Bauter remains hungry to compete again this next year won't so much be a learning year as it will be a perfecting year. Um, working on maintaining my strength, um, uh, just just like tweaking my dives that little bit more to, to get my dives from a six and a half seven to a seven and a half eight. The 24 year old admits that she had a roller coaster of a ride to get to this point in her career and that her experience of narrowly missing out on qualifying for the 2016 Rio Games has added to her fuel now to keep pushing to realize her lifelong dream of representing the Rainbow Nation at an Olympic Games in the sport she loves. CSWC, CGTN, Johannesburg, South Africa. Philadelphia Orlando made history by being part of Kenya's rugby women's sevens team that made the Rio 2016 Olympics. Now the postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics applied the brakes to Orlando's ambitions to fire up the Kenyan Lionesses to a better performance than they had in Rio 2016. CGTN's Mohamed Abubakar brings us her story. The COVID-19 containment measures in Kenya has seriously affected professional athletes in the country. For Philadelphia Orlando, the Kenya women rugby team captain, the country's continued lockdown on sporting facilities and events has forced her to adopt a new routine. Uh, when it started, like the lockdown, we were staying indoors. Like, we were scared of what if I go out there and get this virus and get them to my siblings, what will happen? So I stayed a bit locked myself in the house. That's where I identified the rooftop. And I had to be creative with myself also, like I cannot just sit in the house, do nothing. 
I need to get something going. I need to keep fit also. And uh, I also go to, to look for some people I can train during this time because it's not easy. I need to hustle at the end of the day because now my income is not coming, you see. And also at the national team, you only get paid when you're training. Now everything is not working for us as athletes. Prior to the postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics to next year, Philadelphia was on a tight scheduled road to recovery from an injury. She recalls the exact moment she learned of the news. Actually, my physio is the one who told me, like, uh, do you know Olympic has been postponed? I was not actually aware because I was just praying and hoping that things were going to work out on us. So when my physio told me, like, do you know, like, there's, there's not going to be Olympic this year, then I said, what do you mean? Are you serious? But one thing he told me, like, now you have all time to recover and get better. You don't need to rush on anything. You just need to take your time now to get better. Despite the personal good news, Philadelphia still feels empty whenever she passes by the national team's training ground. I miss my teammates. I miss the whole thing here, like passing the ball, getting tackled, like uh, playing around with my teammates. This is something I've missed, like four months being away from your teammates. You know, we were like a family. With uncertainty still surrounding the rescheduled Tokyo 2020 Games next year, Philadelphia hopes that she and her teammates will not have to bear any more bad news. Mentally, I'm not prepared for any sad or bad news about Olympics come next year. I'm hoping that things will get better because it's everyone's dream to be at the Olympics game. And, and I'm just saying, not only Olympics, because if Olympics won't be there, how about other games, you see? That one will be, will be very crazy for us as a team. And for me, I think it will kill me because I've been really working hard and hoping that I can make it to the second, my second time in Olympics. One thing for certain is Philadelphia Orlando and the Kenya Lionesses just hope they'll soon be able to reunite as a team and scrum again on this field. Mohamed Abubakar, CGTN. From a five-day series to a 30-minute final production, the 2020 Olympics Dream Lives On special show presented the best reporters on CGT in Africa with demanding and testing circumstances. It has been a reality check on how the pandemic has changed the face of news gathering in today's world, as Sadiq Shaban narrates. We initially began planning for uh, the trip down here in June, would you believe it? And it's not until last week that we were able to secure uh, you know, our travel here. And the reasons really are, are, are quite uh, uh, abnormal, if you will, uh, the new normal, as they say. Uh, first of all, Richard, it was very difficult to uh, get appointments for interviews and uh, uh, get approval uh, to, to, to meet the athletes. Because as, as I mentioned, the athletics camps are closed. So athletes that broke camp and some moved out of these areas and went back to their rural homes. And Richard, we had situations where we made phone calls that were never answered and we sent text messages that were never replied to by athletes who were fearing, uh, you know, what the, the many unknowns about coronavirus. As, as you know, it's still uh, a learning curve for a lot of people, so they were not very sure how to engage uh, with us. So as a content producer and as a content generator, it becomes very difficult when you're not able to get into that one-on-one -on -one space or, you know, a close space with, with athletes. In, in an instance, we, 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 got, uh, we got a feedback from one athlete who told us, please bring your COVID-19 certificate, testing certificate, uh, for us to be sure <laughs> that you're, you're okay. And we had to really uh, look back at what that meant in terms of a new reality. But uh, uh, the opportunities that present itself also for us as professionals is to learn to cope and to do with what is presented to us at this particular time of the coronavirus pandemic.
The postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Games by a year came as a crushing blow to thousands of athletes across the world who spent the last four years getting ready for the event. Besides the demanding physical and financial needs, a huge number now face mental challenges as they strive to keep fit for 2021. On our special segment, we take a look at the sport's mental wellness. Did you know sports is 10% physical and 90% mental? Every sports person needs to apply some degree of physical strength in their game. From athletes to swimmers, cyclists to basketball players, etc. All have to put in the extra hard work. But the most underlying factor is mental wellness. So what happens when a global pandemic affects one of the most prestigious sporting events? The Olympics. Following the postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, sportsmen and women across the globe were affected in one way or the other. We highlight some of their reactions to the breaking news. So, bearing the weight of such news, how did they get back on their feet? And did the news affect their training and their focus? I spoke to a sports therapist to get clarity on this matter. Thank you so much, Sean, for your time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. To what extent do you feel Olympians have been affected mentally by the postponement uh, of the Olympics? So what we found in our athletes, um, and, and completely understandably so, um, is we found a, a significant emotional impact and emotional roller coaster that they've gone through since the news has come out and since the news has broke. Um, and understandably so, I think most of these athletes work four years and, and longer um, to reach their dreams and reach this goal um, of going to the Olympics, and, and, it's, and it's in this time has been taken, and taken away from them. Um, and if you look at Kubler-Ross's model from a psychological perspective, athletes generally go through a modified version of shock, um, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, um, and eventually acceptance. And uh, it's, it's my job during this time and my role to get them to that stage of acceptance. However, that doesn't take the emotional impact away. So understandably so, it's been a difficult time and a bit of a roller coaster, but a significant uh, negative emotional impact on them. Now, with all the uncertainty, do you feel Olympians uh, can still be anxious about the Games in 2021, given that no vaccine, no cure has been found uh, for COVID-19? Um, I think it goes without saying that any athlete is going to experience some form of anxiety during this time. Um, if you compare it to, you know, the uh, Rio 2016 with the Zika virus, a lot of the athletes went through the same thing. It was that fear and that anxiousness of contracting the disease, you know, at that time it was through mosquitoes, etc. Um, but you can, you can understandably, the, the anxiety will be present. Um, a large part of their focus for the time being is going to be to refocus on their goals and make the decision of whether they want to go, go to the Olympics or not. But, you know, it's not a case of whether there will be anxiety or if there will be anxiety. It's when anxiety comes and the impact that it's going to have on them. What kind of support do you feel should be accorded to athletes during this tough time? As an Olympic committee, I truly believe we need to employ professionals um, to go reach out and, and, and chat to these athletes during this time. So from my perspective, get them the support that they need during this time. Start with a psychologist or professional, get a support group, and then eventually get in touch with the coaches. And that's going to be from a professional Olympic committee perspective. I think all the Olympic committees around the world and countries need to, need to put that in place. All right, thank you so much, Sean, for your time and expertise. We would have loved to talk long, but uh, this is it for now. We appreciate Having been injured and forced to retire only after two throws in the men's javelin finals, Julius Yego did enough to walk away from Brazil Rio 2016 with an Olympic silver medal. Since then, he struggled with form, but worked himself back to tip-top condition only for Tokyo 2020 to be postponed. Sadiq Shaban has more. The last few months have been unprecedented for Julius Yego. Even for a professional athlete used to the elements, he's been forced to adjust drastically to the new reality. I'm confined to, to my compound, just the training. And uh, yes, when Corona came, that was in March, of course, when the you know, first case was reported in Kenya, and then everything was closed, schools were closed, stadiums were closed. So I say maybe the best place, the safest place for me to be with my children and families to stay home. 
So we left Nairobi and then we came home. So this is the place I've been. And uh, it's been hell, you know. At the first, like two months, I had no place to train. We, well, I was just in my compound with my family. The 2015 World Javelin Champion has been using his new set of gym equipment recently donated by the Athletics World Governing Body. Working out at home has attracted enthusiasm from his youngest supporter and son, Finn Keegan. You know, sometimes when I'm doing this kind of training here at home, and then, you know, it reaches a point where I want to take a bit uh, of rest. He will come and tell me, no, daddy, fanya, fanya. So he encourages me as well, and uh, I think maybe he will, he will follow my footsteps when he grew up and he is forever with me whenever I'm doing anything. As you can see now, I'm sure he doesn't know what is happening, but he knows that there must be something going on here. He's always jovial and encouraging. What Diego got for us in the third. Oh, he's really chucked himself at that. Oh, hello. That's way beyond... Popularly known as a YouTube athlete, Julius Yego stormed to the top of the game in the world five years ago during the World Athletics Championships in Beijing, China. The last four years have been the best of his life so far, before 2020 changed everything. The African Games champion has found himself isolated and lonely. He has become his own coach once again, spending time training days on end, alone in this vast sporting facility. You know, we're just training to, to keep our bodies, you know, get used to your, the real thing. Like for me, I have to train, you know, coming here to throw javelin, just not to lose that rhythm and, you know, and not to lose my technique. Because now we can't train in the stadium because of the rules we have, because of Corona. And uh, yeah, I enjoy this training, training alone in, in such, uh, this big, uh, you know, field, very beautiful and just training alone, a very big social distance for myself. In the finals of the javelin throw at the last Olympic Games in Brazil, Diego's throw of 88.24 meters was his first and best attempt, but also his last before he was injured. He settled for silver medal behind Germany's Thomas Roller. He wanted more this year before the Olympic Games were postponed. I'm looking forward to next year, you know, having a very good season ending in a very, uh, a very high note in Olympics. So I'm just looking forward to next year. I think it will be a special year for me. I have that confidence that I will come back again stronger with big performance. Until the 2021 Olympic Games begin in Japan as rescheduled, Julius Yeager will spend the next one year sharpening his skills and turning his focus towards history. Having been sidelined from the sport by the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic in 2020, the Kenyan javelin champion knows only too well that his aim can only be sky high. In the game of throws in Africa, no one knows best about the sticks than the current African javelin champion, Julius Yego. The former world champion, who is also the reigning Olympic silver medalist, says he's fully recovered from a nagging hip injury and is looking forward to a golden upgrade in the 2021 Olympic Games in Japan. Sadiq Shaban, CGTN, at the Eldred Sports Club in Kenya. Well, on that positive note, we wrap up our special show, The 2020 Olympic Dream Lives On. We look forward to 2021 to capture the epic moments that we missed this year with comprehensive coverage of the Summer Games. We thank you for watching. Stay safe.